All right, in this video, we're gonna go over how to run backing tracks and click track using Logic or other DAWs. It's gonna be very similar with other DAWs, such as Pro Tools, Ableton, Cubase, Reaper, whatever, I'm just personally using Logic. If you haven't watched the previous videos on how I set up the click track and the backing tracks, the links are in the description down below. So here we have our click track and our cues, and then here's the scratch track, and then all of our backing tracks. So we're gonna need to bounce these out as two separate files. If you did watch the previous video on setting up the iPad where I had to pan everything hard right and hard left. You don't have to do that. You're gonna send them to different outputs with your interface. So I'm gonna solo the click track and the cues. I wanna bounce this out by hitting Command B or File, Bounce, Project or Selection. Save it as a, as a WAV file. And then I'm gonna call this Redshift Click. All right, once that's done, we're going to bounce out the backing track. So I'm going to mute the click, mute the count in. Don't forget to mute the scratch track because you don't want that in there either. Command B, I'm gonna save this as Redshift Tracks. All right, now that that's done, we're going to close out this session and open up the master session that we're going to use to run all of our songs. So let me close out of this. I'm not gonna save it. Let's open up a new session. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create Let's just do 10 audio tracks right now. Set no input because we're not recording. And then I want you to set your output to mono output one. Just set that uh, like that for now. And we're gonna create 10 tracks. I did set this to output mono. You do have the option of sending stereo tracks to the front of house, but I honestly usually just use a mono signal. If you're relying super heavily on backing tracks, maybe send a stereo signal. But if you're using backing tracks just to complement your set, I personally would recommend just to do mono. I'll let you guys argue about it and wait for the audio snob to call me a noob down in the comments, but it's, it's really up to you on how you want to run this. I run it in mono though. All right, now we are going to drag in the files that we just created. So I have Redshift Click right here, or excuse me, Redshift Tracks. That's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to drag that in to Audio One right here. If it asks you to import, uh, the, you can go ahead and say that for the first one. Don't do it for any other ones. Cool. And it did it did drag in the the markers. That's not that big deal. For some reason, it didn't import the correct tempo. So I obviously set that right here. I'm going to set that to 134. I don't know why I did that. That's really odd. So I'm going to drag that in, and I'm also going to drag the click track down here on the bottom. So now we have the tracks for Redshift on one audio file and the click track on another audio file, and they're synced up. All right, now this is a little weird. When you import something like this, which was bounced as a stereo track, I even though I created mono tracks, it still set this output to be stereo out. Logic likes to do that. It thinks it knows what it's doing, but it's not what we want in this case. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new, another new track, one audio track, just output one, and then I'm gonna drag this down to here. Now it's set to output one. When you drag the audio file in here, it tried to create a stereo out, but we just want it to go to a mono out. So then I'm gonna rename this to Redshift and then delete this track. It's a little annoying, but it's an easy fix. And then don't worry about the click track, we'll address that here in a minute. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna scroll to the end of this song and then import your next song. So I'm going to do, drag this one in on the next file, and I'm gonna get it lined up to the grid. And then I'm gonna drag in the click track on the file below that. And again, it did try to change this to stereo out, so I'm gonna make you know a new audio file and repeat the process and rename this one. All right, now what you have to do though is that right now it's set up to 134 for this song. We need to change the tempo for the next song. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna open up your global settings, push G or push this button right here. And right here under tempo, that's where we're gonna change the tempo. So this one's at 148, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my playhead at the very beginning, click, it's going to create a new marker. I'm going to drag it up to 148. Also be sure that you're giving yourself a little bit of time when the song is over before the next one starts. And it's up to you how you want to set the set, but just keep that in mind. Don't put it right as the other one is the ending. All right, so once your tempo is set, this will get everything lined up to the grid. And then when you do the next steps, like sending MIDI data or having a synchronized light show, it's going to be a million times easier. And then you're just going to load in, keep loading in all your songs. So I'm going to load in the next set of songs once this one is done. Make sure that as you load in a new song, you set the tempo right there. If you try doing it at the very end, it kind of squishes all of them together and you have to rearrange it and it's a huge pain. So do this as you go. I'm gonna do this off screen and then come back when it's done. All right, now I have my songs loaded with backing tracks and click tracks. All of them are in here. And again, all of the tracks are set to output one. 
Also notice I put in a sound check spot right here. Let me zoom in a little bit. I have this set up so that you can test the click track to make sure that's going to your ears of whoever needs them. And also when the sound guy asks for your tracks, you can send this to them. Also, I'm going to delete all of these markers right here because I don't need these. But see how every single song has the correct tempo? All right, so now we need to send the click tracks to one place and the backing tracks to another place. You'll need to have an audio interface to do this. First, make sure all the backing tracks are set to output one, which they should be, and they are in this case. And again, make sure it's not stereo out. And then next, what we're going to do is we're going to send all of our click tracks to make sure they go out to channel two. And again, sometimes they won't, Logic won't let you do that. It only lets you send a stereo out. So we have to, again, make another track, audio. We're going to set output mono two. We're going to create that. I'm just going to create six of them right now just to make this easier. Drag this click down to here. Whoops. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Drag the click down to this one. Rename it. Redshift click and then delete this one. All the click tracks are sent to output two and all the backing tracks are sent to output one. I'm going to do this off screen and come back when this is done. All right, now all that is done. Again, it's a little bit annoying, but th that's just the way that logic works. So if there is some other way to fix it, let me know. I definitely am curious. All right, now for the interface. Every interface is different, but you should have an output one and two at least from your interface. So output one is now going to go to a direct box which is then gonna to go to the front of the house. And output two is gonna to go to your in-ear monitors or in-ear monitors or your headphone amplifier and then to your drummer. If you're using in-ear monitors, you know, just send this to your in-ears and you guys can turn up accordingly. If you're just sending the click track to your drummer, 100% make sure that you have a headphone amplifier so you can turn up or down the click if you need to. The sound will be different in every venue, so you wanna make sure you have control of how loud it's gonna be. I'll put links below for my two recommendations of a headphone amp, one that I use and one that I recommend. All right, so the next step, let me go, I'm gonna push control A and then Z so that highlights everything and then zooms in on what I've highlighted so I can see everything. So now we need to lock all the tracks in place to make sure that they don't move or anything like that accidentally. So right click any of the audio files, Go down to track header components and make sure lock protection is enabled or track protect. Then what you're going to do is you're going to lock every single one of them. Now if you try to move it, it's going to say the track is protected and it cannot be changed. If you do need to move it, you can always unlock the track and then move it around. This keeps you from accidentally moving the files over by accident without realizing it or deleting them by accident, or it keeps your bass player from messing with things when they think they know what they're doing, but they really don't. All right, next we're gonna hide the click tracks because we don't need to see them. Press the H key, and you see how the H appeared up here? Turns on and then off. So we're gonna do all the click. We're going to hide, enable the hide on all of these, and then hit H, and all of, of, all of the hidden tracks disappear. If you wanna see them again, hit H and you can see them again, but we won't need those right now. All right, the next thing that you wanna do is you wanna go up here to your play button. You're gonna right click and you're going to enable play from selected region. What this is gonna do, it's gonna allow you to scroll. So I'm gonna scroll up and down the tracks right here. And then you just push space and see how it automatically starts that song. I'm gonna go down to here, space, it starts that one. Go down to this one, space, it starts that one. Go over to any track you want, hit the space bar, and it'll start that song. Also, another thing I would do, I would right click, I would disable play from marquee selection. The only reason that I know that uh, is because I did this for, I set this up for a friend's band, and one of the other members, they accidentally put this marquee tool right here, and what that does, it means that when you push space, it doesn't start from the beginning of the track, it'll start from right here, and it got everything all screwed up. It took me a minute to figure out what happened, but it's definitely just a better thing just to have it turned off. Like I said, it happened to me once. Just make sure, just turn that off. Also keep in mind, this will be on the next time you use the Logic. If this is the device that you use to mix uh, or record on, having the play from, play from selected region is actually kind of annoying. So just make sure you turn that off while you're mixing and then turn it back on for live performances if this is the same computer that you use for mixing in live performances. All right, so now you have all your songs set up in one session. So you can move this around or whatever and you know slide it up or whatever and then set the order, hit space on this one. When you're ready for the next song, slide down, hit the space bar, slide down, hit the space bar. And then if for some reason, you, you have to cut your second to last song, you can just skip down to the last song I said. Or say you get an encore and you have to play one more song that you weren't originally planning on doing, you still have access to all of your songs in here. So just make, make sure all of your songs are in this master file, no matter how you set them up. That way you can always trigger all of your songs whenever you need to. 
This is the absolute basics of having backing tracks and click track set up in your session. This is really simple. Just go to the track, hit space, and it starts the song. Very, very simple. When you're ready for the next one, click it, hit space, it'll start that song. But if you're looking for some more advanced techniques, there's something called the arrangement tab and also meta events. So the arrangement tab is mostly used for recording so you can arrange parts like a verse, chorus, bridge, whatever, and move them around for an easy way to restructure the song. However, you can use this live to create a specific set list and keep the set flowing. So we're gonna press G to open up the global tracks. Again, if you don't have it open, it's right here, or push G. And the arrangement tab right here is what we're gonna be looking at. So we're gonna go to the very beginning. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. And we're gonna add a new arrangement. It's gonna try and think that it's the intro, but if we click it, and then hit rename, I'm gonna call it sound check, and then I'm going to trim it to where the sound check ends. And then I'm gonna to go to this one, add this one, and I'm gonna call this red shift. And then I'm going to scroll over to where the next one is, drag this out, drag this out all the way to here, zoom in, and then I'm gonna add another one here. Now, if you watch, do you see how there's this gap right here? If I try to add one, it's not gonna let you put it in any space. See what I mean? So it's either, so Redshift has to go all the way to the end until the new arrangement starts, but that's not a problem. So I'm gonna rename this one. All right, I'm gonna do this off screen and come back when it's done. All right, so now the arrangement tab is all set up. Redshift is right here under Redshift. Prologue is right here under Prologue, and so on and so forth. So why did I do this? Let me go ahead and set this back up in the order that the songs were supposed to be. So if the set is exactly in this order, it doesn't really matter. Let's say, what if, what if I want this song to be the next one right here? It, you know, as the song, as the set's going, when this song is done, it's just gonna go right into this one. It doesn't matter what the next track is. So you would have to, you know, it's not the b biggest problem in the world. Your drummer would just have to scroll down and hit the space bar to start that next song. It's not the end of the world, but what if you want the song to flow just right into the next one without doing that? And that's what the arrangement tab is for, so you can drag it over into a different spot. Now in order to do this, it took me a minute to figure this out, you have to unlock all the files that you wanna move, and you actually have to unlock all of them, and that includes all the hidden files that we just hid. So hit this button, or press H, unlock all of them so that they can move, so then let's say I want Discovery to be the next one. I'm gonna click this tab up here, and I'm just gonna drag it over to there. See how it dragged everything over? It dragged the file, it dragged the click, the ears. I don't know why this got dragged down. Oh, because it's hidden. But uh, see how it dragged the tempo change, it dragged the files. Everything that was in this section of the arrangement tool got dragged over here. So let me move, uh, let's say, let's bring uh, this one next after that. See how I dragged everything over there. The tempo changes everything. So now, when this song is over, it's going to go right into this song. Now you do have to get, it gets a little bit tricky as far as how quickly do you want this song to go into the next one. So as soon as this one's done, you have about this much time. So you have about two bars right here until it goes into the next one. That's really up to you on how you want to set everything back up. So now I'm going to, so say this is how I want the set to be set up. I'm going to, lock everything back in place, and then hide the click track so I don't need it again. Command A and then Z so I can see everything again. And now this is the set. So it's gonna go from here into this one, into this one, into this one. So this is great if you want the set just to flow right into each other. But what if you want the playhead to stop? You don't want your drummer to have to go over and hit space. You want it to just stop. There is something called the meta events and that is going to stop the playback. So that's really useful if you want the sing if you want your singer to talk to the crowd or something like that or if you need a retune break or a switch guitar break. And in that case just just my two cents here. This track right here restart. This is a interlude. So if you know that there's this, you know, you play these first two songs in standard and then the next song, you know, needs to you need to switch your switch your tunings or switch your guitars or whatever, put in an interlude track right here so it has a minute, minute and a half, however long you need to switch your instruments, and it's a playback thing so that it doesn't stop the set. Just my two cents. Anyway, what a meta event is, is a specific commands you can tell Logic to do, and it's, and it's easiest just to show you. So let's create a new software instrument, choose empty channel strip, and then we're gonna set it to no output, actually. And then I'm gonna rename this to meta events. Now let's say at the end of this song right here, when this song is over, and if you click it, it's gonna say it's, it's, blo it's locked, so it's, it's doing what it's supposed to do. But we're gonna go to the end of the song right here when the song is over, and on this file right here in the meta events, remember what we talked about how to use your pencil tool up here to command click? We're gonna command click right here, 
to draw in a new bar of MIDI data. I'm going to put right here, I'm going to put my playhead where I want it to stop. Now I'm going to hit D, and it's going to open up the events window over here, or you can click this tab right here. Right here where it says notes, we're going to change that to meta events, and we're going to add a new meta event where the playhead is. What we're going to do is we're going to go here to the number value, and we're going to set that to 52, which in this case is stop playback. So you can see it actually, it'll do that weird glitch where it'll jump back to the beginning and won't do that uh, when you're playing your set. So let me show you, I'm gonna turn that uh, play from selected region off because I need to be able to play from here. But so when you play, it's going, it's going when it hears it, when it sees this, it stops. And then when you're ready to start the next song, and again, let me turn this back on just so it's easier to, and then you hit space bar and it'll start going. Now, did you notice what just happened? I hit space and it didn't start going because this, I put the meta event right here too late. It needs to be over here. So then when I hit space, whoops. And again, it won't do, it won't do that in the live show, but see how it started that one because you can see the little number symbol right here. Make sure when you're stopping the playback, it's not within, it's before where this track is actually going to start. Otherwise you can't start that track and it's really frustrating. So now you can see, so that's how you can set up your set accordingly. Again, it'll take a little bit of tweaking, but this is how you can arrange a set to flow right into the next song. Uh, again, it's not the end of the world if your drummer just has to manually go through these and then hit the space bar, but you have your options if you want to have the set flow right into each other. Just make sure you rehearse it uh, ahead of time. So next up, we're gonna go over how to send MIDI data in order to change your pedals or your effects or your sounds or whatever so everything will be synced up so you won't have to manually switch your pedal to turn on distortion to go into the chorus and then turn on your delay and your boost to go into a lead. Hope this helped you guys out. Thanks for watching.